One of the best car websites in the world, I'm talking electric cars, called The Driven, has reported that Australian electric cars, and American ones as well, could earn $12,000 in a single year with vehicle-to-grid technology. Now, it's worth pointing out, I have made videos in the past showing you how you can save thousands of dollars. And a lot of people that have signed up to Tesla's actual electricity service in Texas and California um, have made thousands of dollars. But it's not just America where you can do this. There's other countries as well. Those include Europe and now Australia. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. It's great to see you. just want to say thank you to everyone who's subscribed and supported the channel over the last 12 months. For me, it's been a crazy year. Um, I, yeah, I've had a, a few ups and downs and crazy dramas. And um, one of the things I've noticed is my electricity bills, which have been um, relatively high. However, a new report from the Australian Renewable Energy Agency has found that a fleet of EVs used to supply frequency control ancillary services, or FCAS, to the national energy market could generate $12,000 per vehicle in a single year. The staggering findings are outlined in a new report, says the Driven Insights from the Realizing Electric Vehicle to Grid Services project that looked at the changing habits of electric car drivers the probable bidding capacity and the potential business case for fleet operators to bid into FCAS markets using vehicle to grid. To be honest, this reminds me of what I've been hearing from people this year. There's been a few power outages here in Australia. We've had things like um, wind events, uh, floods, um, fires, which have caused major power outages. But people with EVs in particular have been able to run their own electricity in their houses for days, sometimes weeks, using their electric car to power the house. Pretty amazing to have that ability. But to have that ability to do that, plus make money for you at the same time, well, that's what this is all about, really. The trial looked at some of the impediments to vehicle-to-grid technology and how new systems such as operating envelopes could help accommodate high local demands when overall network capacity allows. He looked at how a business case could be developed in the context of fleet operators accelerating the electrification of their fleet and quantified the potential economic value and the user experience of vehicle to grid technology. What it basically found was the average EV can earn $12,000 participating in the energy market based on 2022 data and use just 1% of the EV's total charging energy. Now that sounds quite incredible, doesn't it? It sounds to be honest, like it's quite mind blowing. There are 10 markets in the electricity grid, which helps stabilize both minor and major variations in grid frequency with varying response times from one second, five minutes. So this is basically helping to balance energy in the grid. It's sort of, sort of like you would operate as your own peaker plant. Using 2022 FCAS market data and the real world charging plug-in times of the commercial EV fleet, Energy, the company AEMO commissioned to do the analysis, was able to calculate what the revenue from vehicle to grid would have been per vehicle. They found that the average vehicle could earn $12,000. That's around about $8,000 US dollars participating in the regulated market in New South Wales, which is obviously a state in Australia. They said the data concluded that FCAS prices typically peaked in the late afternoon to early evening for the period observed, which aligned well with commercial vehicle availability. Furthermore, the revenue that can be earned is further limited by the capacity of the charger. For example, if the charger capacity was raised to 15 kilowatt, the 60 second raise revenue per vehicle would increase to $5,600. So this is one thing you need to check, right? Vehicle to grid. So how fast can your car actually charge? Or how fast can your car send energy from its battery to something else that could be to another car or to a house that partly determines how much money you can make from that car the point of this story as well is to help you identify which car you should buy in order to take advantage of this scenario now you don't need your electric car to be home all the time to make all this money right what you need to do is to simply take advantage of those evening peak hours so to have your ev plugged in sending energy to the grid between something like five o'clock to nine o'clock at night. That's really when you make the money. With Tesla's Powerwall, with their virtual power plant, 
the same thing applies. Most people need energy from the grid at that time of day. That's when um, you find power plants need to jump in and use peaker plants. That's how you can make so much money, simply by plugging it in for those few hours of the day. So you can still go to work if you want to, as long as you're home between, say, uh, 5, even 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. Those are the peak hours of the day when that electricity is quite expensive. One of the main concerns with vehicle to grid has been that additional battery cycles would accelerate degradation of batteries. However, with recent advances in battery longevity, this is no longer the issue, says the driven. And I've been keeping track of things like the study done by Recurrent in the United States on Tesla battery packs, showing that do they last longer? Um, do they last less time if you plug them in? Uh, do they last less time if you use fast charging? They don't really. Tesla battery packs now seem to last for a very long time. In fact, I've been following Model 3s, Model Ys, Model Ss, Model, you know, all these vehicles. How many kilometers are people getting out of a battery pack now? A lot of people are reporting they're getting uh, plus 400,000, 500,000 miles from a battery pack. I mean, by that time, do you still want the car? Maybe, but the point is here, these batteries are lasting for a very, very long time, and especially lithium ion phosphate batteries. Lithium ion phosphate batteries are being used more in vehicles, particularly from China, um, but also, all, I mean, General Motors and Ford plan on having lithium ion phosphate batteries. You can already get a lithium ion phosphate battery in the Mustang Mach E, for example. Now, LFP batteries it generally will give you twice as many cycles on average than a ternary battery. So it's worth considering when you buy a car, what is the battery chemistry? Is it a ternary battery? So like a, an NCA chemistry battery, nickel, cobalt, aluminium, nickel, cobalt, manganese battery, or is it a lithium ion phosphate? Now, LFP is generally going to give you more cycles, which will enable you to, to not worry about using your battery pack um, to charge the grid, essentially. Now, the reality is that even lithium ternary batteries now are getting huge amounts of range in their battery packs in terms of their overall life. So I don't think this is likely to cause a problem for a battery. Batteries can be cycled now more than 5,000 times before really having any significant degradation. So yeah, I mean, that's you're talking decades. Earlier this month, Octopus Energy, partly owned by Australia's Origin Energy, launched the UK's first vehicle to grid tariff, offering free charging for EVs if the customer allows the energy provider to utilize their vehicle's battery to export electricity back to the grid during peak demand hours. So it's another way that you can save money. There are currently around 20 million light vehicles in use in Australia, says the Driven. If they were all electric and each had a 50 kilowatt hour battery pack, which they don't, they would have a bigger battery pack than that most likely. But if they only had 50, the national fleet would effectively represent 1000 gigawatt hours of storage. This would be a lot more battery storage than all of the battery storage combined that's currently in Australia. So it would be a massive amount. Now here's what Climate Energy Finance said about this study. Batteries on wheels, electric vehicles, should be viewed as one of the most important enablers of the full decarbonization of the global energy system. Our energy security is undermined by a record of 60 billion per annum of oil and diesel imports. And this is referencing Australia. Electrification of everything, including transport, will be a huge technology and decarbonization enabler. He said that historically, the Australian energy market operator has framed the growing EV fleet as a problem because of extra energy demand. However, it should be viewed as an enormous enabler. So a lot of people say, oh, if we all had electric cars, the grid couldn't handle it. Actually, the grid would be much better off. I mean, even if only 50% of all EVs were connected to the grid, this would enable the grid to balance itself. We wouldn't need peaker plants, coal peaker plants, gas peaker plants. The grid would be able to be almost self-sustaining simply using wind and solar. Even if the primary option was only solar, which you know obviously doesn't work during the nighttime, the battery storage will be more than enough to get us through the night. This is the future of the global energy industry, a situation where probably most of us won't be paying for electricity. It'll be essentially free. Now, Tony Sieber has mentioned this on a few occasions. He's referenced how this will benefit us as consumers. I think it's a huge positive. Focusing on vehicle to grid is very, very important for car manufacturers because this is what enables this technology to really benefit everyone. Thanks for watching.